Our objectives for this video are to identify the principles of medical professionalism and to understand the GMC's duties of a doctor. As we mentioned in our previous video, when approaching SJT questions, the first step is to read the scenario and identify the key medical themes. There are eight themes or principles that are really important to know for the situational judgment test. These are respecting clinical seniority. This includes understanding your role and being aware of the role of your clinical seniors. Due diligence. This includes investigating and improving current policies. Teamwork. This includes working well with others within an MDT. Effective communication. This includes having a sensitive and speedy approach. Local resolutions. This includes knowing how to deal with issues and when to escalate them. Patient safety. This includes maintaining the safety of the individual and the public. Honesty, integrity and professionalism. This includes being open and maintaining the respect of the medical profession. Confidentiality. This includes knowing when to keep and break confidentiality. Have you heard of some of these principles before? You don't need to worry if you haven't. In the next few lessons, we will understand the principles of medical professionalism in detail and how they apply to different practice questions in the situational judgment test. Before we progress to those lessons, we need to understand the duties of a doctor. Do you know what these are? The duties of a doctor are a set of guidelines written by the General Medical Council. The guidelines are compiled into a document, which is referred to as the good medical practice. It's imperative that all doctors and medical students adhere to these duties, otherwise it may be detrimental to their future as a healthcare professional. It's important to understand that being a good doctor means more than simply being a good clinician. In their day-to-day -day role, doctors can provide leadership to their colleagues and vision for the organisations in which they work. So the good medical practice not only highlights the well-established duty of a doctor, but also sets out the wider management and leadership responsibilities of doctors in the workplace. The good medical practice has four main domains. These are knowledge, skills and performance. This domain highlights that patient care should be the primary concern of a doctor and they must provide a good standard of practice. Therefore, doctors should keep professional knowledge and skills up to date. It also implies that doctors need to recognise and work within the limits of their competence to ensure that the patient receives the best care possible. Safety and quality. This domain highlights that doctors should take prompt action if patient safety, dignity or comfort is being compromised. Doctors should also protect and promote the health of patients and the public. Communication, partnership and teamwork. This domain highlights that doctors should treat patients as individuals and respect their dignity. They should work in partnership with patients, giving patients the information they want and respecting the decisions that they make. Doctors must also work with colleagues in the ways that best serve patients' interests. Maintaining trust. This domain highlights that doctors should always be honest and act with integrity. They should never discriminate unfairly against patients or colleagues and should never abuse a patient's trust in the profession. This might seem like a lot of information, but don't worry. We'll refer back to these four domains throughout our lessons on the medical themes. The good medical practice is also available for everyone online and I highly advise you that you read it in preparation for your UCAT. In fact, the UCAT consortium recommends that you read this document prior to your test, so make sure you put it on your to-do list. Well done for getting through the lesson. After watching this lesson, I hope that you can identify the eight key medical themes and begin to understand the GMC's good medical practice guidelines. Now that you have a basic understanding of the SJT content, we can go into more detail in the next chapters and start some practice questions. See you again soon. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.